Good luck. Let's see. Yeah, so there's buttons here, in fact. Hi, good luck. Cool. Oh, so recently on Leeches, I've been playing the Alkine defense against everyone. Um, ever since National Master Tony Rotella, uh, under the username Tony Ro, produced a video on YouTube explaining some of the basic ideas and encouraging people to try it out. Uh, so I did try it out. And I found that, like, okay, yes, I'm not, like, the world's leading expert in uh, the Elekin defense, but it surprises many, many opponents. So, yeah, you, um, after, I don't know, I've been playing it about a month now on the website, and after some experimentation, this seems like the best move order against most Lee Chess opponents, so... Notice how we've transposed into a four knights defense. Most opponents don't normally play the four knights defense, so um, there's some kind of a moral victory there. Yeah, 2d5 is super typical. You're not wrong. Um, however, I think this is also playable. And I don't think Tony uh, covered this, but... Um, I'm trying to remember, Grandmaster Evans talks about the Four Knights defense, mentioning if somebody plays bishop b5, he plays bishop c5. If they play bishop c4, uh, Evans plays bishop b4. And this avoids symmetrical positions and gets something kind of interesting for both players. Um, but yeah, backing up. So this here, yeah, this d5 is the normal move. I've tried it on many occasions, and I just can never, I'm never satisfied with the positions I get. So I've been playing e5 instead, and it seems to work all right, but maybe there's a refutation of it that I've not considered. Um, uh, yeah, you normally just... Uh, let me think about that. e4, knight f6, knight c3. Oh, oh, oh goodness. Yes, I'm sorry. Grandmaster Evans covers knight takes e4 as well. That's the classic fork trick. Yeah, no, that's absolutely the right move there. Um, <laughs> oops. Well, I'm going to get more than I bargained for. Um, yeah, knight takes e4 absolutely is uh, the best move there. All right, I'm going to prevent this pin. And Evans goes into detail explaining it. I forget, I've seen like the Mammoth Book of Chess by Burgess, I think also covers it and explains like, why knight takes e4 is so good. I could be making that up. Um, but yes, yeah, somehow between Evans and perhaps one other author, um, you can look through all the variations and see that yeah, black just equalizes in all lines there. Um, that's not a stale equality either. There's a lot of dynamic possibilities after equalizing. So that's a really good outcome for black in the opening. Yeah, I'm a bit embarrassed that I missed it, to be honest. But um, what can I do? All right, so... Um, the knee-jerk reaction here is to exchange bishops, and it's correct. Like, I'm not going to find better than that here. Um, trying to nuance this with knight takes knight first would just drop a piece, or get into a really awkward position, but... 
Knight takes pawn takes. If I, yeah, I'd have to do bishop takes there. They could take my knight. I could retreat my bishop. They take b7. I take back. So I don't lose a piece actually. It's doable. Um, hmm. Well, another variation. Knight takes, bishop takes, knight takes. So I could take here, and then knight d takes b4. Which is awkward and very problematic. Yeah, I can't do that. So really, I'm selecting between bishop a5 or... Bishop takes bishop. Bishop a5 is so sad. Yeah, we're going to exchange here. The problematic thing is figuring out how to activate the c6 knight, since they can just play this. Um, so... And if I move this over, then they do knight takes knight, and I lose a pawn, so I can't do that. Um, so the other point is if I take on d5 and then play knight, well, yeah, actually the bishop on c4 is pretty awkward, but I'm not sure if I can retain the pawn on d4 long enough to make it continuously awkward or if like yeah, if I exchange knights and play knight d4 they can take on d4 and try to pick off the d4 pawn with moves like f4 f5 rook f4 queen f2 it could get ugly um on the other hand this knight on d5 is kind of a monster not going away um, they want to play pawn d4 and pawn c3, so I can't just sit around here doing nothing. Bishop e6 eventually probably walks into pawn d4, pawn d5 tactics, so I can't really let that happen. Knight d4 here would probably just, inc well, no, they would exchange rather than play c3. Yeah, knight d4 doesn't look so bad. Rather than bring the fight to them here. Now the other point is if knight takes d5, they do bishop takes, and this is just awkward. And then they could play like knight d4, knight e1, f4, and so forth. Um so yeah, knight d4, pawn knight takes pawn takes, queen f4. It's ugly. I don't like it. Um. Hmm. Bishop g4, knight e1, knight d4, f3, or f4 directly, c6. Knight takes, queen takes, pawn takes, queen takes. It's playable. Looks playable. Bishop g4. Um, knight h4 is not possible. Hmm. Bishop g4, queen e3, bishop takes, queen takes, knight d4, queen e3 again, c6, knight takes, queen takes, f4, or c3 rather, c3, knight c6, f4, pawn takes, rook takes, queen takes, b2. Yeah, so bishop g4 looks playable. Um... Mm. But yeah, if I start exchanging here, 
queen takes, they build a pressure on this square if I take back bishop takes. It's not so smart. I do get a tempo with knight d4, but it doesn't last. Or does it? With the bishop on d5, knight d4, c6, threatening b5, a5, etc. Then the knight eventually has to drop back. I don't have the bishop reinforcing e6, so they can double my pawns. But then if they try f4, that undoubles them, so it's not such a concern. Um... Hmm. Yeah, I think this is the best I'm going to find here. <laughs> Last game, I was an exciting player. This game... Four knights defense. Well, I mean, the decision to play the Cochrane or not play the Cochrane was not my decision. So, not that the Cochrane gambit is sound, but no. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're not wrong that, like, there are ways for black to play more dynamically than this. That's... At least half my fault. I've played some over-the-board games, uh, match games even, where there's like teams playing. And I got myself into such a bad corner playing this kind of stuff. Um, the point where, like, if they played a proper sequence of moves, they could, like, advance their kingside flank, and I just didn't have a counterattack. So, that's why I'm being kind of extremely cautious and trying to calculate things pretty deeply here. Um... Because, yeah, I've had some bad games where I've played, like, knight h7 and or, and then f5. and Like, it was just a terrible idea. Um, I got away with it, too. So I haven't learned my lesson yet. Maybe today is the day I learned my lesson. <laughs> or maybe we say, uh, not today. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so I might, I'm seriously considering, like, either king h8 or knight h7, some way to bring my queen out to the king's side. Um, oh, but if I move the queen, c7 drops, so, goodness. Yeah, so the reason I was so convinced that this bishop g4 was a good idea had everything to do with bishop takes knight. If the knight just moves back to e1, what am I doing? Other than nothing. Because, I mean, if I fall with knight d4, then f4 lands very quickly. Oh. Okay, well this is easy. This is super easy. Yeah. Um. So this bishop is beautifully aligned with my king, but there's one small issue with this bishop. Just one 
minor factor to consider in this position that might, at least for a while, give Black some good initiative. Um, I'll leave you to guess what it is. All right, so option A, option B. B is so tempting. <laughs> uh, mm. Hmm. If I played this, King H2. If I play C6, C3. No, I, I still have this fork. Knight H5, King H2. Knight here. No, I can't do Knight there right away, but I could do C6. I could do C6 right now, in fact. Um... Let me exchange knights, and I lose my attack. Um, is it so bad? I'm being greedy, but it's fun to be greedy sometimes. Oh, sorry, if I'm too greedy, they just play this. Oh. So, can I find a way to justify my greed? Probably not. <sighs> um, damn. I'm going to have to play the boring move. Because that is a problem. I mean, the only thing I could interject would be knight takes knight. Um... Yeah, I have to play the boring move. <laughs> I apologize. Like, this is too good. I'm sorry. <laughs> but tell you what, there is an option C here. Option C is after the queen moves, we go back. <laughs> uh there we go. That's the middle ground that we need. The crazy... yeah. Yeah, do we... we go back. It's too fun. We don't need this, the rook. <laughs> there we go. We can have our cake and eat it too. Um. Now we're talking. <laughs> now I'm trying to be thinking ahead of like if this sort of thing happens, do I have any trickery where I could sack my d4 knight and like checkmate with the queen and the pawn? No, it doesn't quite work. It'd be cool if it did. Um, Hmm. But we do have this threat, so that's kind of fun. So yeah, that's an idea, that's an idea. Um... And this way my knight is still anchored on this beautiful square, this outpost. All right, so, um, now if I kick the knight right away, it can relocate to e2. If I hold my fire for a moment, they play rook g1, and I'm kind of dying? Hmm. How much do I like dying? How much do I like kind of dying? Hmm. Pawn here, rook g1, pawn takes knight, queen h6. 
Yeah. Oh wait, Queen H6, Knight F3. Oh, that's fun. Knight F3, King H1, Knight takes, Rook takes. With another mate threat. Queen F6, Queen takes, Knight. Um. Hmm. Damn. Am I stuck playing Knight C2 again? <laughs> Surely there's some other way about this. I mean, there's queen g5, which is no fun. That's just no good, also. <sighs> Dang. Wait a second. Queen, um... C6, rook g1, queen h4, queen h6, queen f2, rook g2, knight f3, king h1, queen takes, king takes, knight h4, check, and then I take the queen. No, wait, no, if the rook's on g2, it's fine. Yeah, so c6 might be playable after all. C6, rook g1, queen h4 seems to hold the fort together. If queen h6, I can take here. Yeah, it seems I'm not dead. Um, if king h1 on that instead of rook g2. Then queen f3. King h2, queen f2, king h1, knight g3, rook g3, queen g3, rook g1 again. Um, queen takes g1. The audience demands the sacrifice. <laughs> it's, one of our kings is lost here. I think I've read out that I'm not checkmated. Hopefully I'm right. Otherwise I gotta like bail out with king h7 or something, and that's no fun. But it's there. Oh, but right, the reason I didn't want to do this right away is because knight e2 hampers my attack. I forgot. That was the reason I gave for not doing this that yeah now my attack just well no i have two knights that control e2 it's okay yeah If it were a tournament game, I would probably just have like done knight takes for a1 a long time ago. But since we've got an audience, we've got to pander to the audience a bit. Right, so here... Is my best move queen h4? If queen h4, then this, and I'm just win. So yeah, queen h4, rook g1, um, knight here, rook up, fork, wins a rook for nothing. That's not bad. Um, Knight f4 prevents pawn f4. Pawn f4 shuts down my attack. So yeah, I have to start with knight f knight here. Assuming there's not some trick. What if rook h1? If 
Rook h1, queen g5, rook a g1. Eh, that's no fun. Yeah, let's play this. And just accept that I don't have a checkmate here, but I do have an attack. Yeah, and all these lines I had knight c2 as a backup variation. So this empowered me to like look for more and more bold attacking ideas. Understanding that if I spend too much time, I could just fall back and just take the rook in the corner and play it out. Um, yeah, good game. Good game, well played, honestly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was sharp. And we can see what Stockfish thinks about it. But, um, yeah, that was tricky. Uh, so, yeah, what Transport said earlier, yeah, absolutely. This used to be my tournament repertoire here, is Knight Takes. Not through this move order, but still. Um, and the thing you need to know here is that Bishop Takes F7 is perfectly fine for Black. And don't panic after this sorts of thing sort of thing occurs that like black is fine. Nothing to worry about. Just kick the knight. Perfectly normal position. Just yeah, don't somehow get mated on this diagonal before you've evicted the knight. Um, but this has been played even in the masters database. There's 12 games and uh, black has won all 12. So this is perfectly fine and a lot more, a lot easier to play than this. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I invented chess, so I'm okay at it. That's the story that we keep going with on this channel. Um, oh yeah, I did wonder about this knight move. Because this makes my bishop kind of awkward. Um, I was figuring at some point I'd have to play this to target that, but yeah, I guess oh, pawn h6 is not popular. Oh, bishop takes is no fun. Bishop g4 might be fun. Um, black tends to lose this, but maybe it's okay. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> Oh, this is tricky. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm ready for that. See, a pawn h6 is not in the database. That's curious. Yeah, even castle. I did consider this. This is kind of fun. As white, I normally play this here, but that's not in the database. Database move is bishop g5, which strongly encourages black to exchange. Oh! This. Interesting. Yeah, this looks like the best black can get if he castles. So, yeah, this is a good position for white. Um, oh, what's wrong with bishop d2? I know the engine prefers this move, but there's probably other good moves here. Yeah, the database move is knight d5. I think normally I play this knight d5 sort of thing in chess and in crazy house. It makes for some exciting games. And worst case, if somehow I play pawn c6, the knight just dances back this way. Um, anyway. Ah. 
So how hypocritical is it for me to now criticize this move that one turn ago I would have played, but now the engine doesn't care for it? Yeah, I, I concluded that I had to take this. Um, and this is okay. This is a good way for me to develop a piece. Oh, this isn't in the database. Is this in the Lee Chess database? Okay, yeah. Black is winning more than 50% of the time here. Black is winning 51%. Uh, and the most popular move is Bishop G4. Um, yeah, H3 has been played. And then, yeah, of course I have to take this. Uh, so, oh yeah, this, this is, so there are other openings where white wants to play this. And to play this, it's fine to move the knight back and then later bring it back up. That's perfectly okay to do that. Since black still hasn't moved all their pieces yet, white does have some time to like play some good moves here. Uh, also, this is kind of a target sometimes. So, yeah, this is... You could spend a turn on this. It'd be fine. Um, instead, this gets really messy. <laughs> uh, oh. I, hmm. I did not spend much time thinking about this move. That's interesting. Engine rec... Oh, well... Okay. Yeah, I say it's interesting. The number, the valuation before uh, queen d1 is minus four and a half. Um, because even after white plays some reasonable looking moves, um, there's still going to be a target here and a target here, and black can just move their king and bring the rook out. So... Yeah, this is just pain for white. Um, maybe this is not the right way to... Oh, well, knight takes b3 if we go this far, but... How does this go? Oh! That's kind of fun. c3 here? How does this work? Um, yeah, I like this. Bishop takes <laughs> this check. That's cute. Uh, and then we take here. And then black has everything pointing at that pawn. And it's just a very difficult endgame for white. All right. Yeah, thanks for joining us. It's been good fun. Yeah, so then we get the fork. And then the, this tactic and that tactic and all the other tactics add up to this. 17 move miniature. Um, yeah. I mean, granted, I spent almost all my time this game uh, calculating really hard trying to find all the best moves. Uh, so overall, zero inaccuracies, zero mistakes, zero blunders. This is not my typical game. So I hope we enjoyed this little experiment we had here. And yeah, for the tournament player, Remember that when this sort of thing um, shows up, you can just take here quite a lot. Um, sometimes this bishop takes might work out, but I don't think it typically does. Um, more likely there's tactics along here, but here there's not. So it's fine here. Black has time to castle, and it's okay. And study this stuff in advance if you're going to play tournaments and you're playing an open game. If you're not playing an open game, then just whatever. But, um, yeah, I've tried to play D5 before. Uh, it's I've never been able to get this to play correctly, and then I saw E5 is perfectly viable. Um... I guess the move I should be most concerned about here is the master move g3. Um, yeah, if bishop c4, hang in a second. Yeah, if bishop c4, we transpose to one of my more favorite lines that Nizug and I have played on quite a few occasions. So, 
Um, yeah, f4 is some cause for concern, but d5 uh, meets this adequately. That's fine. So probably g3 is of greatest concern, and you know, just learn all this stuff. I don't know. Somehow become fluent at it. That's probably best. But most players on Lee Chess will follow e5 with knight f3. Is that true, or am I just making that up? So if we get this position, uh, 591,690 games, white plays knight f3. 450,241 games, white plays f4. And then bishop c4. That's not what I've seen. Interesting. Can I finesse this somehow? Can I see, like... If I further filter this to players in the middle range. Okay, Knight F3 is still a favorite. What if I just pick exactly 2,000? Uh, also, what if I pick, like, not 2012? Um, let's pick this year. 2,000 rated players this year prefer Knight F3, but it's F4 is a very, very close second. I haven't seen it that much. Don't know why. But yeah. Um, anyway, I should be prepared for these other lines. But yeah, we had a good game here. That's pretty exciting. Cool. Hope we enjoyed that.